Volkswagen has sold more than 14 million Polo since the original went on sale in 1975, which suggests it's a pretty good little car. In this CarGurus used car review, we're going to find out if that is indeed the case. To find Polos of this era listed for sale, simply go to cargurus.co.uk, select Volkswagen Polo from the search list, enter your postcode and then set the range of years from 2009 to 2017. Through the wonder of technology, you'll then see a list of the best deals in your area, complete with dealer ratings provided by past customers. If you were listening carefully to that last piece of voice over there, you'll have heard that this generation of Polo was on sale for almost a decade. So there's loads of used examples to choose from as a result. Some are five doors like this, but you can also choose a three door model if you prefer. Into the back and oof, it's absolutely boiling in here. We we'll use that as an excuse to test this window, I think. Uh, right, the Polo is super mini class. So we're thinking Ford Fiesta, Vauxhall course of that sort of space. And sure enough, Headroom is good back here. I'm five foot 11 and legroom is perfectly adequate. You can also get three people in because there's this central seat belt here and you've got Isofix mounting points in the outer two seats as you'd expect. If you're looking at a three door Polo, the good news is that the front seats do slide a long way out of the way. So access to the back seats is pretty good by super mini standards. In order to have split folding rear seats like in this car, you need an SE spec model or above. Otherwise, it's a less versatile single piece folding backrest. That in all models, getting the back seats to lie flat also requires lifting up the bases can be a bit of a faff. The Polo's boot is about the same size you'll find in a Ford Fiesta, so that's big enough for a weekly shop or a few bags for a weekend away. This dual height boot floor on some models is useful too. You can either have it in a raised position and have a lower loading lip or drop it down and then you can fit more stuff in. Also useful in the Polo, if you look under the floor, there's a full size spare wheel. So if you don't like those fiddly repair kits, that's good news. Where the Polo does move ahead of rivals is in the polished feel of its interior. Think of it as a Golf on a slightly smaller scale and you won't be far off. Oh, surprise, surprise, hot here too. Good to see that window works as well. Uh, right, now all Polos built after the 2014 facelift come with a touchscreen as standard, unless you go for the basic S model. Before that point, for a pre-facelift car, you need to pick a higher spec version if you want the touchscreen. However, no matter what Polo you opt for, you will get this really nicely finished dash. It feels very solid, it looks classy, and these controls are all very simple and logical to use. It gets the basics right too, like the driving position is very good. There's lots of adjustment in the seat and in the steering wheel, and the pedals are nicely aligned here, so it's very comfortable. All round visibility is good, so the Polo is a good option if you're a new driver or if you're slightly nervous behind the wheel, and being narrow and having responsive controls, it's very easy to park. What the Polo's not is a lot of fun. For that, a Ford Fiesta or a Mazda 2 is a better bet. But for something that is a small car with a big car feel, it's comfortable and refined on the motorway, this does the job. As with any Super Mini, you should check your prospective Polo purchase for signs of damage to the bodywork and wheels, because these cars tend to spend a lot of time in towns where it's easy to pick up scrapes and scratches. In terms of maintenance, you want to look for evidence of regular servicing, ideally annually. Also, most of the engines in the Polos use a timing belt and that needs replacing every four years. So if you can't see that it's been done within the last four years, put aside four to five hundred pounds for a new one. Now that might sound expensive, but it's better than buying a car with a faulty timing chain, which then wrecks the entire engine, as some owners of 1.2 litre petrol power Polos have found, because that can be really expensive. You'll also want to ensure the air conditioning blows good and cold, the brakes don't judder and that the clutch feels strong. Petrol engines range from naturally aspirated 1.2 and 1 litres, which kick off with around 60 horsepower, to a 1.8 GTI from 2015 onwards that has more than three times that power. The sweet spot for most though will be probably either the 74 horsepower 1 litre or the 90 horsepower 1.2 turbo, both of which have a really nice balance of performance, refinement and low running costs. There's also a range of diesels, although they're best for those who plan to do high mileages due to the risk of the DPF filter becoming clogged with lots of short journeys from cold. Some of the diesels have also been recalled as a result of the VW emissions scandal. 
Back on the petrol engines, the pre-2015 Polo GTI used a 1.4 litre twin charger unit, which gave some owners no end of problems with reliability. In fact, VW eventually discontinued that unit. Faults are also not unheard of with the dual clutch DSG automatic gearbox. So if you fancy a car thus equipped, try and find one with a full VW service history. The bottom line is, if what matters to you most is ultimate peace of mind, then a high-end i20, Toyota Yaris or Kia Rio might suit you better because they all come with much longer manufacturer back warranties than Volkswagen's standard three-year 60,000 mile offering. However, what they don't have is the Polo's sense of grown-up refinement, of having that big car feel in a small car body. And that really is this car's selling point. It's a combination that, with those 14 million or so sales since the 1970s, make the Polo one of the most successful super minis of all time. If you fancy becoming an owner of one too, then start your search at cargurus.co.uk. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so we can keep you informed when our latest videos go live.